Hello everyone. I am in the middle of a project right now and I'm bringing you along on installing this knit neckband. Today I'm sewing up the Peekaboo Patterns Dakota Dolman for Addie. This is her Elsa uh, party dress, her birthday dress. So I'm going to take you along on the neckband portion. I've already sewed up um, the shoulder seams here. This dress is very simple. It's free, by the way, if you have the code there on Peekaboo's website. Um, I'm going to be attaching this neckband today via serger. I like to do that with Addie's neckbands. If this was a, a garment for myself, I would be using my home sewing machine, my regular sewing machine, and we'll do that video in the future. Um, but for today, I've already cut out my neckband. I did use the pattern piece provided in the pattern. I find that for children's patterns, especially the neckband usually does a pretty good job. The length that they've provided already is pretty good, um, and I don't have to tw to tweak that very much. The length of that neckband is uh, pretty good. So I went ahead and cut out my neckband, and I'm going to take you along on the journey of installing this. Caveat, this is what works for me, guys. Uh, sewing is all about finding what works for you, and these steps are what I have through trial and error, figured out how to install neckbands um, to my degree of satisfaction. Maybe some of these steps you don't do or you do a little differently, or maybe something that I do will help spark um, some processes that maybe you want to start using. So I'm just sharing my process here as I go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my neckband. I already cut it out, like I said. I'm going to take it to the iron and I'm going to press it uh, wrong sides together. So I'm with my pretty sides out and I'm just going to make a memory line. I'm going to make a memory line here for myself. Go ahead and pre-press, pre-press this in half and then we will move on to the next step. So let me go do that. The next step is here at my serger. So I've opened up my neckband. I had it ironed in half, but now I've opened it up and I'm going to put right sides together up here and make the two tails meet. And I'm gonna sew this up and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my serger to sew up the neckband. Trim my tails. And now our neckband is in a loop. We've created the loop of the neckband, and since I have pre pressed it, it wants to go back into um, a folded position kind of on its own. So there is our neckband. The next step is probably the most important, y'all. This is quartering. Quartering for a knit neckband is so crucial to get it right. It really is very, very important. So this is probably the most important part of my video. So let me show you how I do mine. This is that neckband we just sewed together. You're going to make quarter points um, on your neckband. So this is going to be my starting here. I'm going to put these two um, ends that I folded together. And that's going to be my first quarter point. And then I just lay it as flat as I can. And then my next quarter point is going to be over here in my left hand. I mark them with pins. You can mark them however you want. And then I open it up. And I put these two right on top of each other. And I am putting this pin on the crease, not necessarily on the pin. I'm using the crease and the seam more than I'm using the other pin. And I just try to make sure that my, um, my ends are level. So this is my third quarter point. Mark it with a pin. And then I do the right side, same way, mark it with a pin. 
Okay, now your neck band is done, and now let's work on the dress itself, which is very, very important as well to get your quarter points in the right place. I'm going to switch it to the right side. We're attaching this with the um, on the right side of your garment. So I am pulling my shoulders together. So here's your here's your shoulders. Here's your neckline. Pull the shoulders together and nest these seams this is really important so here's your two shoulder seams when i say nest nesting seams is kind of a quilting term but it works a lot for garments as well you got to nest your seams a lot in garment making so i'm just kind of moving those two seams to where they're they're budding up together and they're aligning so that's what i've done there and then i'm coming to my left side and pulling it out, not stretching, just laying it flat. This is going to be my front quarter point. Mark it with a pin. Okay, make sure your seams are still nested. Re-nest them if you need to. And then I'm going to come over here and make my right quarter point here. This is actually making quarter points on your front neckline and on your back neckline. So when you open this up, you have your front and your back quarter point made. Now, do not assume that your shoulders are your left and right quarter points. That is not accurate almost every single time. Sometimes it is on these small children's garments, um, but it likely will never be that on most adult garments and even on kids' garments. I don't trust it. So what I do is I align my front and my back quarter points. I just lay the pins on each other and then again I'm working this to lay it flat and find my quarter points on each side. Trying to get the seam out of the way. So you can see there how much different the quarter point is as opposed to the actual shoulder seam and that makes such a difference that's what messed me up so much i was relying on that shoulder to be a quarter point and it really is not so i've lined them up 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 went past my shoulder seam and that is my left side we're going to do the same to the right you're just laying it flat and then there's my right quarter point I hope this makes sense. Like I said, it is very important for um, the amount of stretch that goes between each point. There is your shirt quarter points. Back, front, left shoulder, right shoulder as I'm looking at it, okay? And then we're just going to pin our neckband to those quarter points. The quarter points on the neckband correspond with those on the shirt. I always like to start here in the back. I put my seam in the back. Kind of just a way for me to tell the front from the back even though I don't have a label or a marking in any way. And then you just continue around your neckband. You're just lining your two pins together. I pull them out and then I put them right back in to where they were. And then we're gonna do the front. You can mark these different ways. You can mark them with a pin like a friction marker. You can mark them with a notch. Some people use notches. You can actually cut out a little notch, however you wanna do it. That is up to you. Okay, now our neckband is pinned onto our neckline and we're gonna sew it. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna use my serger. I also do this a lot with my normal sewing machine. If I was making a garment for myself, I usually do use my normal sewing machine. Uh, but today we're gonna use the serger. So let's go over there and sew this neckband on. Okay, we're at the serger. We are, again, we're attaching this neckband um, right side on the right side. Okay, I'm just gonna put this here into the serger. I'm not cutting off anything um, when I'm surging here. I'm just sewing this on. So I'm kind of going um, inside of my foot. This is the, the knife right here. 
Let me see if I can find a pointer. This is my my knife right here that I am um, hitting on right here. So I'm kind of putting that to the left of that so that I don't cut off any of this. I'm simply attaching it with my serger. I'm not cutting off anything. My neckband is already small enough and I don't want to make it any smaller. Okay, well, like I said, I like to make a few stitches. So I'm going to remove this pin so I don't hit it. And I'm going to just make a few starting stitches. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to work this fabric so that it's kind of here in your hand. And you are going to stretch only the neckband here. So in my case, the white to fit the shirt. You're not gonna stretch the shirt itself. You're just stretching the neckband. And you wanna make sure they're aligned. And I'm kind of stretching with this hand and making sure everything is right and straight with this hand. There is a technique to you. You kind of just have to figure out what works for you. I'm stretching again with my left and I'm holding with my right. And I'm gonna keep moving this around as I go and be careful underneath here. You don't wanna make any holes with your serger. So I'm gonna remove this pin and then again, I'm going to stretch my white to fit my blue. And then I'm gonna hold it here with my right hand and attach and just keep working it around. Repetition and practice is so important, you guys. This stuff becomes a muscle movement after a while because you're just used to um, putting these on. Removing a pin again, and you're stretching from where you're at here with your sewing machine up to your pin. You don't need to worry about what's left over here yet. That's why we quarter it. You work in quarters. Only worry about what has been quartered here. So I'm making sure that my white is stretching to my blue, and I'm holding it down, and then I'm sewing. <laughs> To where I began. So what I like to do is just kind of sew off. I just sew off of the fabric. I do leave myself a little bit more of a tail here. And there we have it. We've attached the neckband. We turn it. So we turn it right side out and we inspect it. The front looks really good. Make sure you've caught everything in your surging thread. That looks really, really good, really nice. So you've attached it here. I do a couple more steps for finishing. So let's do those now. So the next couple of steps are just how I finish my um, necklines. What I've done here, and I forgot to record this, sorry guys. This is how I attach the tail of my serger. I don't weave them in. I fold them back into the stitch line and then I zigzag over them. So that's what I've done. Let me clean it up here. Serger police, please don't come for me. This is just a technique that I have developed for myself. Not saying it's right or wrong, but it works for me. Okay, and then I'm going to top stitch now. I really like the look of a top stitch neckline. So I've taken the arm off of my sewing machine and I'm gonna slide my neckline in. And then I'm gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the, the edge here. So I've aligned this mark 
I don't know if you can see one of the marks on my sewing machine, that red one right there. I've aligned it with this edge and I am going to just do a straight stitch. I've lengthened it to a three and that's going to hold this down. And I kind of like the look of a top stitch neckline. So that's what I'm going to do now. Some important things to keep in mind with top stitching. Top stitching is not a securing stitch necessarily, so it doesn't have to be super tight. And also there's no stretching, zero stretching with top stitching. You are just simply attaching. So in this hand, I'm just holding it loosely, keeping it flat and even so it doesn't bunch up, but I'm not stretching at all. I do have some contrasting thread. I kind of like the contrast on a neckline. Again, no stretching, only smoothing. Keeping it flat. <laughs> don't quit on me now okay let's do some back stitching and there we go there is my neck band there is the top stitching I'm going to clean up my threads here then the last step will be to press it and then we're good to go for this neckband. For pressing necklines, I like to use my tailor's ham. These are very popular. You can find them in Joann's or wherever you get sewing supplies. This helps you kind of be able to curve your neckline over there. And I'm just going to press this just to kind of set my stitches and steam a steam iron really does help get any kind of puckers or anything out i don't see any in my neckline but it'll just help the overall look steam iron really does help Okay, and there is our neckband. Okay guys, <laughs> there is our neckband installed in Addie June's birthday dress. You can see that it's laying flat, there's no puckers, it's not pulling. It is laying flat in the back as well. The back looks really good as well, laying flat as it should. I'm gonna probably cover this part up right here with a label in a little bit. But yeah, I'm super pleased with it. And that is how I attach a knit neckband in a garment with a serger in Addie June's. Stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if you have not done so already. Um, a knit neckband on one of my garments is coming up. We'll be measuring our own neckline. I do that for my garments. And then we'll be using a regular sewing machine plus the serger. So stay tuned for that. Okay, that's gonna do it for today's video. You didn't see my face today. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a wild weekend. So I just wanted to share this knit neckband with you. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you do your knit neckbands. Let me know if this knit series is helping you. You. I hope it is and I know it would have been a big help to me when I was starting my knit journey and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up I will see you in the next video everyone take care bye bye